day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the Lord. We welcome you into this virtual, virtual worship space, wherever you are, whether you're traveling in your car, you're sitting in your home. We are grateful that you have joined us in this time of worship. We are thankful to God for your spirit in this place and where you are and joining us virtually um, over YouTube and Facebook. We are grateful that you are here. As we begin this first day in Advent, we would like to invite you to sing our opening hymn with us. That opening hymn is entitled, Angels Have Heard on High. Let us sing together. Amen, and praise be to God. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, Sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still that hope that lies within his reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead be safely to that blessed place you have prepared oh, but if if the storms they don't cease and just in case the wind keep on blowing in my life my soul, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Though the storms keep on raging in my life. And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still that hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared but if the storms don't cease and just in case the winds keep
keep on blowing in my life. My soul has been anchored in the Lord. I rely that sometimes in this life we're gonna be tossed by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But you gotta remember in the Word of God we have an answer that keeps me steadfast, unmovable, despite time but if if the storms don't cease and just in case the winds keep on blowing in my life my soul my soul has been In the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, my mama, 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 my the pupils may roll, the bankers may dash, but I will not sway because He holds me fast. So dark a day. The clouds in the sky, I know it's all right, cause Jesus is my, my soul has been anchored in my soul, my soul has been anchored in my soul, my soul has been the Lord, the Lord. Amen, amen. To God be the glory, because our soul is anchored in the Lord, our, our hearts are in the right place. And I pray today that as you have already been ministered to in song and prayer, that you will anchor hope into your heart on this Sunday of Advent. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for being God, for being our creator, our sustainer, for being the one that is our anchor in the midst of the storm. And we pray, God, that as we continue to worship you, that this preach word will be an offering of praise, a word of encouragement, God, we pray that those who have gathered around the world will indeed connect to you by your Holy Spirit. Touch God in a special way that someone who is in the storm will know that they're not by themselves and someone who has come out of a storm will be able to encourage another. Thank you, God, for men and women, boys and girls, young and old, rich and poor, male, female, single and married, we thank you, God, for all that you have created. And we pray now a prayer of inclusion that who may ever feel left out will know that this day God calls them and this day God hears their faintest cry. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our most blessed Redeemer. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. For God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. This morning, my friends, I invite you to turn with me in your word to Paul's letter to the church at Rome, reading Romans 15, verses 1 through 6 from the NIV translation. It is our custom, if if you can, to stand right where you are to read the word, but most importantly, let the word stand inside of you as we hear God proclaim truth today. Starting at verse 1, the Bible says, 
We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please his neighbor for his good, to build him up. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we call your attention for a brief moment to verse 4 of this text, for it simply says, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. With the aid of the Holy Spirit and your encouragement this day, I invite you to join with me as we preach from our subject on this first Sunday of Advent, Hope from the promises of God. Hope from the promises of God. My friends, it has been said uh, that a human being can go 40 days without food, three days without water, eight minutes without air, but not one second without hope. Somebody else has said, y'all, that hope is the little voice you hear whispering maybe when the world is shouting no. Hope, my friends, as defined by the dictionary, is a feeling of expectation and desire for certain things to happen. Archbishop Desmond Tutu defines it this way by saying, hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. Helen Keller said it this way. She said, hope sees the invisible, feels the intangible, and achieves the impossible. And Thomas Carlyle, that great British historian, writer, philosopher, and mathematician, said that he who has health has hope, and he who has hope has everything. Somebody say amen right there because we've got to understand y'all that hope is that element that keeps us alive and hope is that ingredient that keeps us believing in almighty God. And this morning on this first Sunday of Advent 2020, when our world is aching, our nation is tender, our state is in distress and our community is bleeding from gun violence and murder, I I stand before you as a pastor proclaiming that the hope that the world needs and the hope that you and I desire is found in the promises of Almighty God. Let me say that again. For the hope that the world needs and the hope that you and I desire, my friends, is found in the promises of Almighty God. You see, church, I want to humbly stake and share my proposition and illustrate my supposition that the relief from our pain and the answer to our questions and the respite from our pandemic is found in the hope that is rooted in the promises of God. And when I say hope from the promises of God, I'm talking about the promised word of love and joy and peace and long suffering. When I say hope from the promises of God, I'm talking about promised words of kindness and gentleness and goodness and self-control. I'm talking about compassion and servanthood, forgiveness and forgiveness and contentment. I'm talking about humility and 
honesty, devotion, and integrity. When I say hope from the promises of God, y'all, I'm talking about something that sustains you, something that maintains you, something that you can lean on and something you can fall back on. Can you just type hope right there in the chat box because I just want to lift up hope to somebody this Sunday morning. You see, seeing Jenkins and friends with more than 13 million Americans uh, infected by the coronavirus, with a national death toll of 265,000, and with more than 5,200 of those 265,000 having lost their lives here in North Carolina, I think that we need some hope today. Y'all, with more than 22.6 million Americans out of work, more than 300,000 of those unemployed in North Carolina, with a staggering number of 2,782 people per day homeless in Charlotte, the largest city in North Carolina, Charlotte, the 16th largest city in the nation, with food insecurities and people dumpster diving just to get day old bread to feed their families. Y'all, we need some hope. And don't get it twisted because we know that our hope ain't going to come from the White House. Our hope is not going to come from the State House. And since the coronavirus has limited access to the church house, I'm suggesting that we get our hope from the promises of God. And y'all, I, I want to pull up to your front door, your mailbox, if I could, and speak about the hope that somebody woke up this morning asking God for. May I be candid and, and straightforward with you this Sunday morning and talk about the hope that you are looking for. For I believe that I'm talking about the hope you need when you get the diagnosis and the hope you need when the doctor says we have to do surgery. Then the hope you need when the doctor says there's nothing else that we can do. I'm talking about the hope you need to get through that furlough, the hope you need when it comes to you just falling out and not getting up again. I'm talking about the hope you need when he come home, he come comes home high again and the hope you need when she comes home drunk again and the hope you need when they hit you again and the hope you need when depression strikes you again and the hope you need when they walk out on you again and the hope you need when they overlook you again and the hope you need when they disrespect you again and the hope you need when the fight gets tough and the friends are few. I, I want to speak to somebody this morning about the hope that you need that you woke up this morning asking and pleading and, and looking to God to speak a word and to your life. And my friends, if, if that is you this morning, if, if you are that person that, that, that you are there, I, I want you to hear what God says. I want you to know that your hope and my hope and our hope is found in the promises of Almighty God. And of course, when I say the promises of God, you guessed it. I'm talking about when you read the word of God, I'm talking about God's promises, God's promises that I will never leave you nor forsake you. God's promises that says in first chronicles, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. God's promises that come to us from Psalm 100 that says for the Lord is good and, and his love endures forever. His Faithfulness continues through all generations. God's promises from the book of James that says every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting 
shadows God's promises from Isaiah that says he gives strength to the weary, increases the power of the weak. Come on, help me. But, but, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall fly like an eagle's run and not get weary. They shall walk and not go faint. God's promises from Jeremiah that says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God's promises for Joshua says, have I not commanded be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you. God's promises for it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they shall comfort me. God's promises that says, do not be anxious for anything but in every situation by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving present your request to almighty God and the peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart. God's promises that says do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans run after these kind of things but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and these things will be given unto you. God's promises that says trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding acknowledge him and all thy words ways and he shall direct your path. Y'all, I'm talking about hope found in the promises of God. And you see, there are some nuggets that I just want to drop into your spirit and impart in front of you today, this morning. And I, I believe I, they, will, they will help you and sustain you in this Advent season. And, and to start with, y'all, I, I want to quote Gary Blair because Gary helped me understand what hope is. He says, hope is an attitude of champions, the fuel of optimism, the enemy of this despair and the creator of the future. Let me say it again. Hope is an attitude of champions, the fuel of optimism, the enemy of despair and the creator of the future. Gary goes on to say that hope is the belief that regardless of what is taking place in our lives right now, at this very moment, our future will contain desirable outcomes. Somebody ought to type amen right there because God is speaking into your life on this 29th day of November simply to remind you that regardless of what going on around you. God says, I'm taking you through to get you to. And never stop on your through, y'all, on your way to, because your to puts you at a place closer to Almighty God. And is that not what Paul said in Romans chapter 15? Is that not what he says, stating that everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through persistence, taught in the scriptures and the encouragement of that they provide will might give us some hope. Y'all, that's a promise. That's a promise from God. And I just want to remind somebody, you see, the Bible is replete with story on top of story to remind us that in our struggles that we have come through and in the pain that we have endured, y'all, this ends up to speak hope and to our lives. Don't know who I'm talking to, but I don't want you to discount that the mountain that you're climbing right now, because that mountain struggle helps you remember what God can bring you through. You see, when the promises of God become our focus, hope rises to fill our hearts, and it affects all of those around us. You see, when, when we go through this, let me say that again, when the promises of God become our focus, when the promises of God become our emphasis, our aim, our core values, y'all, then hope rises up and fills our hearts to affect all of those around us. 
Let me see if I can illustrate it like this for you. See, it's like when you fill a cup of water with more water than the cup can hold, the water spills out and the water quickly rises to the top, overflowing again, spilling out on everything around it. And please know, my friends, that the same thing that happens with water in a cup can happen when God fills your heart with hope. Okay, in other words, when we are filled with hope, it overflows and it spills over into the lives of other people. It fills them with the same spirit that God has filled us with. And you see, here's the bonus, y'all. The gift of an overflow can oftentimes be the gift that somebody else needs. The gift of your overflow, the gift of your prayer life, the gift of your devotion, the gift of your fasting, it not only touches your heart, but it touches all those around you. That's the abundance. Is that not what Luke 6, 38 tells us? It says, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Is that not what the gospel writer is saying? That's why you got to give, and it shall be given unto you. You see, the Bible, my friends, is encouraging us to give to others who have been lacking hope and to allow what we have been given to overflow into their lives. And I just need to pause here in my minute, I think, and lift up a friend who may be lifting up a friend who is in a season who is lacking hope. You see, I want to pause and let somebody know this morning that you are appreciated and that you are appreciated by other folks. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in because God is working through you to get to somebody else. You see, I want you to know that the power of God that is working through you is holding them together. I want to encourage you to stay in there because the person that you are helping, they might be ready to give up. They might be ready to stop moving forward. They might be thinking about cashing out the dream of their life and the journey that they're on. But with encouragement this morning, I want to say to you, my friend, to keep on doing what you're doing because you're making a difference in somebody else's life. For you see, in this season of Advent, Advent, that Latin word, Minister Donna Avantas, that designates the spirit of preparation, the celebration. I, I like the way that Miss Hammy was able to talk about the lighting of the candle, the preparation that she and her husband prepared for their first child. What a, a wonderful illustration about though he, the child didn't come when they wanted, but the child was right on time. When you have have hope and you are prepared. You know that God is going to come into your life and as God comes into your life overfilling your cup it will flow to touch somebody else. This second coming that we're preaching about the birth of Christ that we celebrate at Christmas. Y'all it is written in the scriptures and the scriptures are clear to tell us that we must have hope. Let me go to the word quickly, Brother L, because I want you to see that the gospel of Luke, y'all, it gives us hope and tells us about the birth narrative of Jesus. Unlike Matthew, which is more a genealogical line of Christ, Luke starts with Zacharias and Elizabeth, Gabriel, Mary, and Joseph. It tells us of the miracle of God working in an older couple to produce what some younger folk take for granted. It tells us of a heavenly angel coming to earth as a messenger on what was to come. A heavenly angel, not Apollo white angel, but a straight up bona fide angel who delivers a divine word of promise of hope. Luke's gospel tells us of the adjustments that must be made for all in order to fully participate in God's heavenly plan. And I 
don't want you to miss that, y'all, because when you have the hope of God, it will alter your life. When you have the hope of God, it will change the way that you think because the hope of God will determine what you believe and the hope of God will determine how you behave and the hope of God will help you belong. Let me say that again. When you have a different belief, you'll change your behavior and your behavior helps you belong. That is what happened with the narrative of Jesus' birth. Mary and Joseph traveling some 70 miles from Galilee down to Bethlehem on a rocky road. Understand, they did not have paved highways like 77 and 85. They did not have SUVs and Cadillacs. They were walking some 70 miles. Understand, Mary is pregnant with child. Joseph, in his physical condition, has to take care of Mary who is pregnant and travel these 70 miles and recognize y'all that I'm sure Mary experienced moments when she wanted to quit. Recognize I'm sure she believed in God but she was more faithful y'all to the promise that not what she was going through but where she was going to. Let me say it this way. Mary recognized that the birthing conditions were not ideal. She recognized that her life didn't go the way she had planned. She recognized that she was going through a rough moment. But understand this, y'all, that she also adopted the fact that I have a promise, a promise from Almighty God that would determine my action and my faith grows. Let me back up and say that one more time. Y'all, when the hope of God's promises determines your action, your faith will grow. Mary recognized that my faith in God grows because of the actions that I'm taking. And I want somebody to hear this word on this first Sunday in Advent that God is calling you to take some actions in faith. God is calling you to stand up in faith. God is calling you to speak up in faith. God is calling calling you to praise God in faith. Let me say it this way. When our hope in God's promises determines our action, our faith grows. Is that not what Hebrews 11, 1 says? My faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It describes faith, y'all, as confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. Somebody ought to give God a praise right there because you do know that you have had the confidence in God. You have faced some situations where you didn't see the end. You didn't know what was going to happen, but you had the faith in God to believe in confidence that God will see you through. And by putting confidence in what they hoped for, not how they felt, confidence in what they desired, not what they were going through, confidence and recognize taking that 70 mile journey, Mary and Joseph, y'all, were able to be the earthly parents of a Christ child. Good God Almighty, understand that God is saying that God promises to, are determined, y'all, that actions and the obedience of the actions made their faith grow. That's your tweet right there for the day because God's promise determined their actions and their obedient actions made their faith grow. And y'all, I'm not sure who I'm talking to this morning. I may be talking to myself, but I want you to know that there are times when we feel the uncertainty and even the uneven rocky roads like Mary and Joseph. We may feel like that we are on a journey that seems impossible. And I want you to know this day, this, 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 this first Sunday of Advent, that the hope that allowed them to persevere is the same hope God is offering you today. Hope allows us to stand up straight when people want to beat us down. Hope allows us to pull down strongholds that may have control of our lives. Hope is that energizes that, that keeps us bouncing back when, when we fall. And don't you know, don't forever forget, y'all, that the harder you fall, the higher you can bounce up. The harder you hit it going down, the 
higher God lifts you up. And hope, y'all, is the most powerful and the uphill uh, uh, source that we have in this. Let me see if I can close because I'm excited today as a Presbyterian to lift up a brother in the in fallen Catholicism. I'm excited today, y'all, because on yesterday, the first African-American bishop was elevated to the level of cardinal. You missing that. You see, on yesterday, y'all, Archbishop Wilton Gregory from Washington, D.C., originally from the south side of Chicago, was anointed, y'all, in a consistory. He was lifted up, y'all, in a ceremony. He was praised, y'all, for his ministry, and now he is a cardinal in the Catholic Church. Okay, you don't understand. The cardinals, y'all, are that body of believers and those priests, y'all, who vote on the next pope, but also the cardinals, y'all, are to which the next pope is selected from. Okay, you're not getting it. His story as a black man from the south side of Chicago, not born into Catholicism, but went to a Catholic school. His story, y'all, from being a priest in Atlanta. His story being a priest in Washington, D.C. His story speaking out in favor of Black Lives Matter and protesting the president, 45 that is, y'all, for going to a Catholic church after having a demonstration, a, a ungodly demonstration of tears gas on protesters. This archbishop, y'all, says that is not the way we should go. Matter of fact, he says as a Catholic and as a member of the church, you can't sit on the sidelines. You got to get into the game. And I'm talking to somebody this Sunday morning who's been sitting on the sidelines. You need to take your, your, your orders from Archbishop, Archbishop Gregory who is now a cardinal in the Catholic. Okay, you didn't really feel me because you got to realize Realize that hope is an acronym. Is is a, is, is I I I put 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 words together. H O P E simply means hold on, pain ends. Okay, am I talking to somebody? Or am I speaking, preaching to myself? Hope, y'all, simply means hold on because your pain will end. And I want to lift up somebody in some pain right now because the old hymn of the church says my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I shall not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sin. I, I want somebody to hold on. Your pain will end. Hold on. Your struggle will not last forever. Hold on. What you're going through right now helps you to get to and to celebrate on the other side. Hold on. Because somebody right now is, is going to be better because you've experience God. Hold on. Somebody's family is going to come back together because you are praying without ceasing. Hold on. Somebody's going to break that addictive habit. Somebody's going to break that stronghold. Somebody's going to stand up and be responsible. Hold on because God is taking you through in order to get to. You see, the Bible says for everything that was written in the past, for every experience that you have gone through. It has taught us the endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures that we might have hope. And I invite you, my friend, if you have experienced something that you didn't know why you were going through it, I want you to go back to this fourth verse of chapter 15 of Romans and you read it over and over again because I want you to know that that right there is the thing that God has taken you through so that you could have hope again. I want you to have hope and I want you to have belief. I want you to recognize that Christ is coming. So we've got to be ready. We've got to be prepared. That's why Paul says in the first three verses of chapter 15, he says, you who have been through, you have, you have made it, you who have been blessed, you, you have to recognize that you are going through it so you can help somebody else. Paul says it's not about you, it can't be about you, it's got to be about Almighty God. 
For Christ himself was disrespected. Christ himself was scorned. Christ himself went through some pain. The Son of God suffered so that we would not have to suffer. Come on, I want you to understand that your hope on Christ, the solid rock we stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. On Christ, the solid rock we stand. Pray with me as we ask and we believe that God will indeed speak to us. God in heaven, we thank you that today you've given us a reminder of your promises. And God, in your promises, we thank you that we can gain hope. For God, we thank you that we have endured. We thank you, God, that we haven't given up. We thank you, God, that somebody prayed. We thank you, God, that somebody lifted us up. And God, we are grateful on this day that as you speak to us, that our cup now overflows. And God, we pray that you will put us in the company of somebody in a hopeless situation that they can see you, not us, but they can experience your love and your grace. God, we're asking now that that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, that, that couple, that single person, God, whatever box they check on the census report, God, that they will now check a new box that says, I'm a believer, that, that, that I'm redeemed, that I'm saved, that, 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 that my sins do not have control over me, but through Christ, the solid rock, we stand believing in the hope. And we pray this prayer, God, that even somebody else who may have felt distant, somebody else who may have given up and given out, God, that they now will stand up again and get back in the game. We ask this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. It's been a joy to minister on this day, and I thank you so much for tuning in. We praise God for all of those that made this service possible. To our ministry of music, we thank you for our AV team. Our COVID-19 team, team our, our centurions, we thank you for all the many things that are happening in our church. Even right now, there are meals being prepared for seniors in our community. And so we are grateful for the move of God in this space. We thank you for being a prayer partner and joining us every morning at 7 a.m. for prayer and devotion. And we thank you most importantly for being a witness to those in our world who need it the most. This is Pastor Cannon. I love you, I pray for you, and I want you to keep hope in your life. Y'all have a wonderful day and a blessed Sabbath. We'll see you next week.